Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and today I'll be reading a multi-character listener by me. So let's get into it. Venti. Venti didn't mean to use his powers in front of you or to creep you out by using them. It was an accident, but he had had a nightmare and that's why he reacted so strongly. When he woke up and saw you, he wasn't registering who was in front of him, and where exactly he was. That's why he had attacked you. Thankfully, it wasn't strong enough to do anything. He wasn't really awake enough to use his full power on you yet. But had it happened, it would have been dangerous. And perhaps even deadly. That's why Venti was staring at you right now, with a shocked look on his face. You could see that he was sorry, incredibly so, because there was guilt. That much was clear, and he knew. And he knew he actually hadn't done this on purpose. He didn't mean to hurt you in any way. It was just an accident. A cruel one. But it was an accident nonetheless. It was something he couldn't control. But even then, he saw you trembling. He saw how scared you were. And he got down on his knees, holding your hands, kissing them, and apologized over and over again, hoping that you could at least try to forgive him. So I know. Well, you weren't meant to see him like that. He was working, and that's why he was being extremely careless with the way he was acting. Not to mention, he was dealing with a faulty criminal. Why should he care? This attitude is the least they deserve, and that's why he was being cruel with them, hurting them in ways that would make you terrified for anyone else. But after seeing the look that he gave them, the way that he just seemed so heartless, it made you scared. And when he turned around to see you looking at him, he flinched. He didn't expect to see you like this. And even worse, he didn't want you to see him. He didn't want you to see this nature of his work. So he ran after you, stopping you in your tracks. Even as you told him to get away from you, Listen, Wyon. This is my job. You knew this. And to be a general Mahmatra, you have to be cruel sometimes. But it's for justice to be served. And you have to understand that. But I would never harm you. I promise. I swear on my soul that I will never hurt you or let anyone else do that. And that's when he wraps his arms around you, stroking your hair, and hoping that you will calm down, and at least try talking to him. Tanari? Tanari is actually very kind, and usually you wouldn't be scared of him. But the reason that happened in the first place was because there was an accident, and he got extremely mad. And angry that he started yelling at you. That's when he flinched away. And he had that moment of sudden realization where he only stared at you before looking away, clearing his throat. I... I'm really sorry. I didn't realize how I sounded. Wyon, please, don't be upset with me. I can fix things, I promise. I didn't mean to scare you. That's when you looked away from him, crying. I just want you to leave me right now. Please. I need... I need some time. And even though Tanari felt immense guilt for this, he just let you go, not saying anything, and feeling too guilty to try and explain himself any further. But he knew it was enough. And whether you forgave him or not, that was your own choice to make. 
Scaramouche. Scaramouche didn't mean to be so scary sometimes. But being a part of the Fatui and being a harbinger, someone who had hurt people for decades, it was easy for him. And that's why he feels really awful about this. He didn't mean to actually make you this emotional and this sad. But right now, you were crying because of him. And the only thing he could do was hold you in his arms and try and reassure you that none of the anger he displayed earlier was directed at you in any way. He would never hurt you. Sure, he has hurt a lot of people. But you, you were never going to be one of them, no matter what, no matter what you think or what you see. That was going to be the truth, always. He's here to protect you, and nothing else. And if he ever dares to hurt you, he'd have to be the dumbest person in Tevat. And thankfully, he's not that. Shall? Shao was getting a little bit irrational. Maybe it was something you could understand. But it wasn't like you could easily communicate with him either. You kept trying to talk to him before he lashed out at you and almost hurt you. And that's when he immediately teleported away. And even though you were terrified and scared of him, you couldn't help but be worried too. That's why you search everywhere in Liyue, until you found him in a safer place. Shao? Shao, please talk to me. I know. I know what happened had to be an accident. You wouldn't want to hurt me like that. Right? You ask. Desperation visible in your voice. But even then, he doesn't look at you. Seeing your eyes. Seeing the way you are, it makes his heart hurt, and he can't have it hurt any longer, more than it already is. Wayana, I don't see how you want me to keep being with you. Can't you see how I'm hurting you? How I'm endangering you in every way? Please, don't let this happen to you. Don't let me hurt you any longer, and just leave me be. I don't think we're meant to be, my own. Not in any way. And he teleported away, leaving you alone once again. But this time, with a broken heart that you would never be able to fix.